<laughs> What's up, Romaine? What's going on? What's going on? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Monday. What's Erica? What's she laughing at, Erica? <laughs> What's funny? Tell me a joke. What's up? What's up? How you guys doing? How are you doing today? It's Monday. It's the start of an amazing, beautiful week. Wow, how's everybody's 2021 going so far? So I got I got something really, 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 really fun that I'm going to share with you guys today. Um, I'm super duper excited. Tina, Rebecca, what's up? What's up? <laughs> So today, I'm, I'm so excited to share this. Um, I'm speaking with some amazing superstars. Um, I'm going live with some of the amazing, beautiful, innovative Elevate Prize winners. Um, so first, I want to say thank you to the Elevate Prize Foundation for putting all of this beautiful stuff together um, and the amazing work that they do. I want you to follow them if you if you can follow them at the Elevate at Elevate Prize. It's an amazing, amazing group of, of people, of of mentors. It's a platform that can awaken the hero inside of all of us. So give them a follow. They're in there. There they are right there. Elevate Prize. Um, so each year, I want to tell you this, each year the Elevate Prize Foundation gives away five million dollars to 10 social impact heroes, uh, people who have started organizations that make the world a very beautiful place. They are in innovators, they are activists, they are problem solvers. And today we have the great pleasure of speaking to three of them. So I'm excited because I have a personal, a personal um, love and passion and I guess I, I, I really support of all three of their missions. And uh, so first, I'm going to I'm gonna just go through the names of who we got here. I want you to get excited. So we got Chad Bernstein. He's the founder of Guitars Over Guns. I hope Chad is in here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in with him first. We got Felix Brooks Church, the founder of Sanku Project for Healthy Children. And we got Brisa D'Angelo and Parker Palmer, the co-founders of A Breeze of Hope. But before we get into all of that amazingness, I want to ask you guys, what's on your mind these days? What's, what are you most passionate about? What's, what's on your mind and what's on your heart? I just want to see, see a couple, see a couple responses. Rizwan's in here. What's up, Rizwan? What's up, Rose? <laughs> Palestine's in the house. Nice. Starting my new business. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm I'm proud of you. And uh entrepreneurship is is not an easy task, but it is fulfilling. And uh if you if you have solved a problem that you truly love, it will be it will be not work but 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 play and uh and fun. So let me see, let me see if I can if I can do this here. I'm gonna add uh, my guy Chad. Yo! Hey, what's up, man? What's up? How, How are you doing? doing? Speakers in the background. I love it, man. Oh, you know, here How's in my your... little home studio. I love it. I love it. So everybody, I would like to present to you uh, my, my actual, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of this guy, um, kind of a secret fan. I've been watching his work and he had no idea um, because I, I, won't, I won't tell you my personal um, kind of connection. To, to, to Chad yet, but I'll, I'll wait for the end. But I just want to introduce Chad. So Chad's organization, guys, is called Guitars Over Guns. 
Guitars Over Guns, and they bridge the opportunity gap for youth from underserved communities through transformational access to music, connectivity, and self-empowerment. They pair mentors with students to make music and build the life skills necessary to thrive. Wow, wow, wow. So this is my life story. This is, I know, man. <laughs> this is my life story. Music, music changed my life, man. Like just the, the power of music, it, it, it totally changed everything for me. Um, so I want to ask you, Chad, why did you decide to start this organization? Well, I mean, music changed my life too. I, you know, music was my refuge. Uh, mm -hmm. I was like an awkward kid that was dealing with probably what every awkward kid deals with. It was the thing that I could kind of pour myself into that made the rest of the world disappear. Mm -hmm. um, but when that happens, you're kind of left with yourself and you have to kind of confront your own reality and, and your own story. And through music, I feel like I was able to own my story and really know myself um and it was my pathway to dignity you know it was like how i really found who i was as a person and who i wanted to be and it was how i found my my can't not do you know it was like the mm -hmm. thing that that you just can't go on without doing Love um that. and that brought me a lot of places i mean it brought me around the world um and, and it brought me also to incredible mentors even as a young kid that not only was learning music but learning how to be in the world and how to be on the bandstand and how to be you know, as a 15 year old kid sitting in clubs in Chicago, you know, playing jazz, like it taught me about life. Um, mm -hmm. And it brought me to Miami where I found a band that represented the melting pot that Miami is. And so through a bunch of experiences as a kid, having this understanding that music was this universal language that could bring people together and having a dream of bringing people together through music, mm -hmm. I found that in a band in Miami and we were playing, it's like an Afro-funk, Latin, hip-hop group. Nice. And we ended up going to a friend's uh, class that was at a juvenile detention center and watching, you know, this is like a career day kind of situation, like uh, what do you do and, and bring some joy to the kids because they weren't connecting with, with what was being brought in before. Mm -hmm. And so we thought we'd tell them about music and, you know, some of us were playing with some pretty big artists at the time. So we thought they'd think it's really cool. And first of all, they told us we couldn't bring the guitars in because the strings could be used to strangle us. So wow. that was like a thing. That, wow. that was an attention getter. But they brought these kids in and we started talking to them about the music industry and they could not have been less interested. But we we're like, all right, well, well, we'll play something for you and then we'll get out of here. And, you know, we don't need to be here if y'all don't want us here. No worries. As soon as we started playing, and as, as soon as our MC started rapping, it was like, all right, it's on. And then this kid shouted out from the back of the room, na, na, nueve. And the guards are like, you know, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. And we're like, no, no, sing it again. And so he sings it, and the whole band chants back. And then he sings it, and the whole band chants back. And all of a sudden, we're vibing, we're jamming. They set up a cypher, we're rapping. Like, all of a sudden, you know, the whole band is creating this moment with all these kids and everyone's just in that space. And you, you know that space where it's like mm -hmm. the rest of the world just disappears. And after that, the ability to have conversations and to ask these kids really what was going on mm -hmm. in their world, it was like nobody had ever asked them. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden people felt seen and heard and conversations started going anywhere and everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, man, if we could do this and, and have these conversations and connect with people in this serious of a way in all these schools where music's being taken away, maybe we could start to change the situations that kids are making decisions in before they get to this place. Mm. Wow. Wow. Ah, you said something I love, man, the universal language of music. I, uh, so without getting too deep into me, because this is all about you, but I, I studied anthropology, biological anthropology in school and <clears throat> anthropology being the study of humans across space and time. And so there's, you know, humans, we do a lot of things different. Like some cultures do have this particular thing that they do, others don't. But music is a human universal. It's a human universal. Every culture that has been discovered on planet Earth has some form of music. Yeah. Um, 
I, I and I and I love that man. I love what I love what you're doing. I love um the ethos and 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 where you're doing it from, the place of where you're doing it from. And I know to spread what you're doing will change so many people's lives. I saw a TED talk. I think it might have been of, of a few of the students uh, yeah. that, that went, and man, it gave me goosebumps. It, it gave me goosebumps. Everybody watch that TED talk, uh, Guitars Over Guns. So Chad, let me ask you this. Um, what are you planning to do with the Elevate Prize funding that you received? I mean, you just said it. Like this is, you know, this is, there's a universal problem um, with music not being accessible mm -hmm. and that opportunity not be given to students and, and particularly uh, students in divested communities and, and communities of color. I mean, those opportunities in the educational setting just don't exist. And so mm -hmm. we're focused on providing that throughout the country. And we're in Miami and Chicago right now and hope to spread it nationwide uh, and have our hearts set on, you know, kind of a first 10 cities, um, music cities, uh, and, and can't wait to get it rolled out because I know, you know, the, the, the concept of like the study of humans and across space and time, like this is our space and this mm. is our time, like mm. now is it. And you had the, the, my first exposure to you was actually in the video that starts with the Einstein quote, you know, if mm. you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, mm. man, I can't tell you how many times I felt like that fish. <laughs> I was like, this is not my Dude. tree. You know, let me get to my tree. So, mm. so we want to, we want to help other, other kids realize their fishes. And I mean, mm. think about, you know, when I think about last week, Amanda Gorman, like mm. how many, how many Amanda Gormans are in classrooms who are waiting to discover their creative potential? Mm. So many, <laughs> so many. We were both one, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 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 Um, so now I got, I got the final question. It's a wild card question. All right, I'm ready. <laughs> um, and so let me, let me, let me think about what, what's, tell me if you can, who's that one artist that really shifted things from, for you? Was there one artist in particular that you just, you know, maybe they got you through a tough time or they, they made you see life differently or is there, could you pinpoint a single artist that had a huge impact on you? Yeah, it was, I mean, it's, it's been a number of them, obviously. Um, first of all, like my influences in the jazz world as a jazz trombone player, like that, th those were major monumental musical influences, but then the intersection of music and social justice where I've kind of found my purpose in life, like, James Brown's music mm. is, is first of all, just you can't listen to it. And if, if you have a pulse, I mean, you, you're going to get out of your chair. Mm. And like groove is always the thing that kind of pushed me, you know, to love whatever it was I was listening to. And there's mm. just no greater groove in the world. So James Brown's music and, and specifically the trombone player in that band, Fred Wesley, is the guy that, that kind of was the founding, you know, the JBs, like Pass the Peas, all those songs. That's okay. the JBs. Pass the And, uh, <laughs> And wildly, I mean, I had an opportunity to tour um, mm. with James Brown's musicians and his musical directors and Pee Wee Ellis mm. uh, and travel the world, kind of taking uh, in, a, in a group called Still Black, Still Proud African Tribute to James Brown with, with Pee Wee, who is James' musical director, mm. and Fred and Maceo wow. Parker, and like learn from their words and their stories mm. and their eyes and their music, what impact this music had on the world and mm. like how how I can be an ally and how I can be a part of bringing that to the world and, mm. and standing for something that, that means so much more than the music. So mm. that's, that's my guy. I love that, man. I love, you know, James Brown, people don't know, man, like the young, the young people today, they don't know about James Brown. James Brown influenced Michael Jackson, Prince, like James Brown, man, he was amazing. I, I want yeah. everybody to listen to uh, I Feel Good. It was probably one of his most famous songs, but you you can't not feel good after listening to to, to James Brown. <laughs> yeah, man. Great choice, great choice. Beautiful, beautiful. Anything, any last things you wanna you wanna share with the audience before I let you go? Man, I just have to say I'm I'm so inspired uh, by all the individuals that are part of this, um, mm -hmm. you know, Elevate Prize and 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 yourself included. I mean, there's just people 
there's so much good in the world if we can focus on it and mm -hmm. don't don't let the rest drown you out i mean the world needs courage right now and part of that courage is just to show up and to be mm -hmm. you and to have the courage to be yourself and so much of what your message is uh in so many ways resonates so deeply with me and so deeply with our kids i mean we share your content with our kids too because it really is about having the courage to know yourself and be yourself um because that's the only you know that's yeah. that's what you were made for so that's appreciate it. you man beautiful well said brother chad thank you so much go, you guys go follow guitars over guns and uh we're out i'm gonna i'm gonna hop, hop off and jump onto the next elevator all right ride. man thanks chad appreciate, appreciate you brother take it easy <laughs> you too Let's see. Nice. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Inspiring. Guys, what are you what are your musical artists that have inspired you? Do you guys have anybody that's like, man, you were just feeling low for a period of your time and just listening to this album, it just it just got you through. Is there anybody uh that you guys feel free to to throw some names, some bands in the in the comment section below. So up next, we got somebody really, really amazing. Um, this this I also okay. We got Trevor Hall, Kendrick Lamar. That's a good good choice. Bob Marley, Bob Marley, amazing, amazing, amazing. I always say Bob Marley is like the best lyricist in the world because he can he can take profound ideas and make them so simple uh i love love bob marley so much so up next um we're gonna we're gonna bring in felix brooks church and the sanku project healthy children so felix is the founder of the sanku project an organization that's using innovative technology to add life-saving nutrients to staple foods and bridge the micronutrient gap for impoverished communities around the world. All right, let me bring let me bring him in. Let me see. Boom. Boom boom boom. All right. Yo. What's up Felix? Great to see you again. Oh, I could have listened to you and Chad for hours. That was only 10 <laughs> minutes. I could have gone done a couple hours of that. Uh, I know. That's like my favorite topic. And I want to say this, like literally my second favorite topic. Actually, it's music. So I got, I got a few things that I'm obsessed with. Music is one of them, but nutrition is another one. And uh, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I like the, the micronutrient deficiencies that americans have that people internationally have is a big big issue um so i want I, you know i want to in introduce again this is felix brooks church and he's got an organization called the sanku project for healthy children and uh i i just i'm in love i saw i saw a couple talks that you that you did that were online i love the problem you're solving um you know, and, and I just want you to give a little bit of background for everybody that's not familiar with your work. What what made you decide to start your organization? Mm. I, um, yeah, I've always wanted to do something different, something with purpose, something, something big. Um, and so my first experience with kind of social impact work was about 15 years ago. I I, uh, I went to Cambodia for four months to volunteer and, and ended up staying four years because I just fell in love with social work. And it was a bit different to what I'm doing now. Uh, but we were helping about 100 kids, street kids off the street, getting away from drugs and pedophilia and all these obviously terrible things. Um, and they came into our center where we educated them and gave them food and essentially tried to get them back into their families and the school system. And um, all of them and most of them were noticeably either stunted physically or mentally with, with learning disabilities. Some even passed away from malaria and diarrhea, which you should not die from. Mm -hmm. And so after four years, I felt that what I was doing was essentially a band-aid. I'd gotten to them too late. 
and, and that is some research and getting the children within those first thousand days of their life, that critical period um, is when you have to get to them. And so fast forward about 10 years ago, an opportunity came across the, to work in nutrition and specifically food fortification, which is adding life-saving nutrients to food. And so then I thought, okay, here's an opportunity to really get to children before these problems start, to get into prevention. Um, and then, so that's, that's kind of where it all began um, and figuring out a method to get nutrients into foods, the foods that people eat every single day and reach millions of people. And we are. Mm, mm. You know, in your, um, I think it was your TED talk I saw, you, you talked about the children with big bellies and how they're, they seem full, but they're starving for, for nutrients. Um, mm -hmm. that was, man, that, that would hit me hard. Um, just, just the deficiencies that exist that, and nutrients are so important for life, right? A healthy life to be able to think clearly, mm -hmm. right? Like to, to balance your hormones and like, just, just to be, be the, the best version of yourself. Like this is the foundation, like without Without that, you really don't have anything else. You can't build anything from that. And so that's why I love what you're doing. I love your organization because it's solving a huge, huge problem. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to save so many lives. And from saving those lives, I think those lives saved are going to change so many, uh, yeah. so many lives just because of the things that can come from those individuals. I, I, I love that. Um, yeah. Same Absolutely. question I got for you. So what are you planning to do with the Elevate Prize funding that you have received? Yeah, this year is all about scale. Um, obviously, the funding is going to help with that. So what we define as scale is obviously installing these machines that we invented. We invented a machine that does the job of adding these life-saving life nutrients into food. So we install them in these small mills in East Africa. Every village might have one, every town might have a dozen, every city might have a couple hundred. So with more funding, we can buy and install more of these machines. The machines add nutrients to the flour that people eat, we reach more people, we save more lives. Um, not only that, scaling our, our staff. We can only do this if we have a great team. We have about 30 people right now, we're gonna double that staff over the next year or so. Um, but our leadership team as well. So the hiring you know, directors of supply chain, finance, all these key kind of divisions in the organization. Um, so again, the funding is gonna be catalytic in helping us add another million people this year. Um, we're reaching two, we're gonna reach three million people by the end of the year, and we couldn't have done it without the Elevate Prize. Wow, beautiful, 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 beautiful. Uh, so that, that kind of leads me to my follow-up question in a, in, a, you know, in a dream world, right? If you have the opportunity to pitch uh, this project, this vision, this mission to anybody, anybody in the world who, whose attention would you want uh i'd have to say elon musk yeah. and and maybe not the reason why people think not because he's minted with money and obviously you want to pitch to people that can give back a lot but um i think i want to pitch to him and get him uh as a board member as a thought partner as a mentor mm -hmm. he's kind of done everything that i've wanted to do we had this crazy idea about a machine or an invention probably existed on a napkin or a scrap of paper. So it was a dream. He took that to something practical and, and commercialized it um, and then reached millions of people with a product, uh, a product that changed their lives and improved their lives. And that's really our path too. We're obviously in the early stages compared to him, but we, this, this machine we invented literally existed on a napkin. Me and my co-founder sketched it out. Um, and it went from that to something that's actually saving lives and one day going to reach 100 million people. Um, and so if I can pitch to somebody to help us along that journey, and yeah, maybe give us money along the way, um, I think it would be Elon Musk. Mm. I think he'd be, he'd be into it too. I really, I really do. Yeah, I think he would. It's a, it's a cool <laughs> thing. He likes cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. We got we to gotta find that connection. If I ever get connected with him, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you up. <laughs> Look this up. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Felix Brooks Church, ladies and gentlemen, follow him, follow his work, uh, the Sanku Project, Healthy Children, 
thank you so much for coming on, Felix. Like this was this was so amazing. I hope to to stay in touch with what you do and try to help. I'm not Elon Musk, but I, I can I can do do the best I can in coming up with some innovation. You can help. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thanks a lot for hosting. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. All right. Thanks a lot. Speak soon. All right. Take care. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. We take so much for granted. Um, you know, I mean, we're all on Instagram right now. So many of us live in comfortable places. Um, but our brothers and sisters around the world, they don't have the, the luxuries that we take for granted. Um, food being a, a, a huge one. The nutrients that we get. And even, you know, a lot of us talk about uh you know gmo food and stuff like that but you know some people don't even have the luxuries of, of that of processed food and felix brooke like what he's doing what his organization is doing is 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 changing the world it's saving lives so I, I applaud him i applaud him um the next the final amazing uh innovator and creator uh from the the elevate prize is a breeze of hope this one might get uh might get uh, a bit a bit intense and emotional for some of us um let me actually bring them on before i introduce them but this they're they're doing such amazing work solving real world problems let me see Boom. Hey. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? How are you? Good. How are Good. you? Beautiful, beautiful. Where are you? Where are you based right now? Um, so we're based in Bolivia and then yeah. constantly traveling. Yeah. Okay, okay, beautiful. Well, thank you so much for joining. Guys, um, let me introduce these these two amazing people to you. So this is Brissa. Is it is it Brissa? Uh, yeah, Br Brisa. <laughs> Brisa. Brisa. Yes. Brisa, D'Angelo, and Parker Palmer, and their organization is called A Breeze of Hope. Lovely name. So Brisa and Parker are co-founders of A Breeze of Hope, an organization that provides free legal, social, psychological, and medical ser services to survivors of childhood sexual violence. Wow um first of all thank you thank you <laughs> thank, thank you sir. thank you thank you for for doing that what a what an intense field that you're in and you're you're giving people that breeze of hope mm -hmm. um so i want to i want to ask you the first question what the heck made you start this <laughs> this organization like what yeah what was it what was the catalyst yeah i, I mean it, it was never part of the plan um mm -hmm. But when I was a child, I was repeatedly raped and tortured by a family member. And I was so convinced that I would go to my death and never tell anyone what was happening to me. Mm -hmm. And the reason was because I didn't want to hurt anybody. I didn't want my family to hurt. I didn't want anybody to hurt for what had happened to me. So I tried to commit suicide twice. And I mean, my life went just totally downhill and then something hit me and it was like if not me mm -hmm. then who mm -hmm. who would go for this kids um who would try to make a difference no one has done it for me mm -hmm. um I, I was one of the first adolescents in bolivia to mm -hmm. seek justice for rape mm -hmm. and the whole system tried to silence me and the whole system tried to proved to me that one, I deserved it because I was a girl, two, that's what we're here for, and three, uh, me trying to break the silence was um, changing what had been already accepted by society. Mm -hmm. And they tried to do anything to, to intimidate me, to silence me, set my house on fire twice, mm -hmm. try to kill me, try to kidnap me. I mean, 
whole ordeal. And that's when I realized that I'm not the only one, that there's mm. thousands of children suffering. And I wanted to be for others what no one was for me. I wanted to tell them the words that I so much needed to hear, which was, it's not your fault. I'm not mm. here for you. Um, so at age 17, I decided mm. this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. And even mm -hmm. if it's the last thing I do, I am going to, to do two things. One, this problem is preventable mm -hmm. and we can eliminate it mm -hmm. because it, it's, it's a purposeful choice that someone makes. So mm -hmm. it is preventable. Mm -hmm. And two, that healing is possible. Mm -hmm. and, and not just masking the problem. You know, we can see people who've been through traumatic experiences and they can have therapy for many years and they're in their 60s, mm -hmm. 70s, and they're still struggling with sleep disorders, flashbacks, mm -hmm. drug addiction, alcohol, mm -hmm. marital problems, mm -hmm. like you name it, it's so much. And they can have been going to therapy all this time. And it's not about masking the problem. Mm -hmm. It's about feeling alive and feeling that joy of being happy. And mm -hmm. we've been working with over 2000 children and we've been able to prove that it is possible that we mm -hmm. can get those broken pieces mm -hmm. and we can start truly healing mm -hmm. to have a, a totally different life than we expected or wanted but we can have a beautiful life mm -hmm. so that's a little bit of why i started it <laughs> um so yeah my name is parker and uh i i came to this work uh for similar reasons i'm a survivor of childhood sexual violence um, i grew up in a home of domestic violence and, and substance abuse and you know, in a very different place. I'm from Alabama. Um, and so I, uh, you know, I lived in that silence. And for all those years, you know, because um, it started early and I, I just tried so many ways to mask the pain and ran from it and ran from it and eventually became, you know, just kind of withdrawn and aggressive and all kind of stuff. And I, uh, I eventually left Alabama, came north, um, and, you know, went to school in Pennsylvania, went to college, and that's where I met Brisa. And I saw what she was doing, right? She started it when she was 17, and it was the first time that I thought, you know, okay, maybe it's possible, right? People can talk about this. Um, and that's when I started to realize, too, the stigma mm -hmm. around, you know, I mean, there's so much stigma for, for survivors of sexual violence. And I think in our culture that tends to, you know, celebrate the macho tough guy, you know, these gladiators, you know, um, you know, kind of, I realized that there's no, there's not also not a space for men and boys to say, I went through this. Um, and it's okay as a man to be a victim of something, right? It's okay to acknowledge that, you know, I was a victim of sexual violence, that I was, a victim in domestic violence mm -hmm. that, you know, and that later on, I realized it's okay for me to feel okay being alive. It's okay for me to enjoy life. It's okay for me to, you know, feel okay about myself, that those things happen and that I can still be a joyful person, that I can still find hope in life and purpose in life. Um, and when I coupled that with what Risa <laughs> was doing, I said, I'm all in, let's do it. Um, you know, I'm going where you're going. And, you know, because I want other kids to find that hope that I never mm -hmm. found, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to find a spot early on in life before things get bad to say, this is what happened to me for boys and girls to say, I, I went through this and it's not going to be the end of my story. Wow. Right. My life is bigger than this. My dreams are bigger than this. It's horrible what happened, but I can see past it. My vision is bigger. Right. I have more strength than the aggressor who hurt me mm. and to keep going. Um, and that's the message I want to carry. And that's the message we do carry. Mm. I guess a survivor, not a victim. Right. Like the, the difference between those two, two words mm -hmm. to. Wow. 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 Um, again, thank you for what you do. I, I love it. I was curious why the name Breeze of Hope. Is it, the, is it your name? Is, it the, is that kind of, okay, okay. Well, there's two things. One, it's, it's the translation of my name. Yeah. In Spanish, the program is called Una Brisa de Esperanza. In English, okay. it's a Brisa of Hope. Uh, but also the, the meaning of what breeze is, is like this soft wind mm. 
-hmm. in a very hot day where you feel like you just cannot go one more step mm -hmm. and then you feel this full breeze of saying maybe I can do one more step so mm -hmm. that's the hope that we want we just want to provide that to the child to say you can do it that's, it. that's it it's possible mm -hmm. it's possible I love it I love it well um so you have done an amazing job with your organization and you won this this elevate prize uh funding what are your plans um of, of you know what are you going to do with the funding yeah so um what i dream and i'm going to do with the funding is try to make what we've learned into something that can be traveled around the world. Mm. Um, for example, we have been able to change the conviction rate for child sexual offenders from 2% to 95%. It's the mm -hmm. highest in the world. Wow. And I want to be able to share this with other passionate people who are working in the field, say, we don't have to reinvent this. This is how we do it. And then mm. also with the healing aspect of, of sexual violence, we have found methodologies that work, that really, mm. truly change. Wow. And how do we share this with other passionate people around the world? Mm. And my mm. third thing is um, we're going to expand our training program mm -hmm. to the whole region, using especially my case after almost 20 years has finally gotten into the Inter-American Court of Human Rights. Mm. So it's going to be heard by them and they are going to create precedent for the whole region of America. So I want to use this funding to create policies and mm -hmm. laws throughout the region to make sure that every child is protected. And mm -hmm. if they're hurt, they can be provided with what they need to heal. Mm -hmm. Love that. Love that. And you're going to do it too. Um, <laughs> so I, I got a wild card question that I asked everybody so far. And um, so I love this whole concept of the big domino, uh, the big domino that knocks down all the other tiny dominoes, right? Mm -hmm. Like the big, the big action that could solve all of the other problems, right? Mm -hmm. what, what comes to mind when you hear that? Is there a big domino mm -hmm. um, that, that, that's in your mind that could knock down all the problems, like that one thing that if you, if you had it, it could be you know, transformative for the, for the whole world in your uh, particular area? Mm. Um, yeah, I, what comes to mind for me is a single word, which is empathy. Mm. Um, I think if, if everyone, everyone, if absolutely, like that I think is one thing mm. that if, if humanity as a whole could truly experience empathy, I mean, very deeply, Mm. Um, I think that would resolve all of our problems. Wow. Um, I really truly believe that. Um, because when you feel another person's pain as your own, you can't harm that person. Um, mm. And when you, you, and when you perceive another person's suffering as your own suffering, right? That mm. these are all my brothers and sisters. And if one hurts, I hurt. Mm. If that level of empathy were shared by all of humanity, we wouldn't be where we're at. Um, and I think it has the capacity to pull us up from where we are. Mm. How do we do it? I know you That's can't answer a that. big <laughs> question. Uh, I think it would fix everything but the how. Listen to Brisa, she has ideas here. <laughs> so that's the other program that we're working on, which is okay. early childhood development. If we can change the beginning, we can change the future. So before the baby's born, if we work with a parent to mm. start seeing that child as a human being, and not just this child that has to be molded and accommodated to the mm. adult-centric mm -hmm. way of living, mm. we start creating this empathic way of seeing everyone is different. But mm. trying to solve the problems later, it's mm -hmm. so much energy, it's so much effort, and it's very little what we can accomplish, mm. but if we can change wow. the beginning. Um, so I know that the huge part of our program is early childhood development. Mm. We work with governments on how to work. And people are more open for that mm. when you talk about how to work with that. Yeah. Mm. That's it. That's it. That's you it. Know, <laughs> I agree with Brisa. <laughs> I love it. No, that, that really is it. You know, one of my, one of my friends, Bruce Lipton, he's like, the father of, of epigenetics. He wrote a book called Biology of Belief. And he said, 
he always talks about how, you know, from, from age zero to seven, the most important years that really develop how your personality, the neural structures in your brain. And he said, the Jesuits, the Jesuits like a thousand years ago said, show me, show me a, uh, a child at the age of seven and I'll show you the man or I'll show you the woman because they knew these early years were going to dictate the future. So I love and, that. And, love that, that. and that's the, the point. Like if as a child you perceive empathy Mm. from your parents from the people mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. and not just seeing you as like oh you're destructive you're doing this but just really empathic a bit mm -hmm. if you develop that in your brain as the child you're gonna have it for the rest of your life that's it so, that's yeah. it beautiful a breeze of yeah go ahead no please. oh no i was gonna say i agree with Lisa. <laughs> um you know and and i think that he has to, to me if uh if someone starts their life with a mind that is wired for survival, mm. right? They don't, they don't perceive the needs of others because my goal is to survive. My brain is set in survival mode. I just need to get through the day. Yeah. Right. That's all my, my life is. And mm. I think if you have an entire generation of people who could grow up and feel empathy and their brains aren't wired for survival, their brains are wired for connection mm. um, and giving, I think, like Brisa said, if we change the beginning, we change the whole thing. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's so true. Um, yeah. Love it. A breeze of hope, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys so much for coming on. Everybody follow them. Follow their journey. Um, follow them on Instagram. Thank you guys, Parker, Brisa. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your amazing, amazing program and platform and sharing your heart with us today. Thank you so much for having yes, us. Yes, thank you for um, you know for everything you do. Thank you. Much love. <laughs> love. Bye bye. Wow. Mm. Uh, yes, breeze of hope. Please follow them, guys. Amazing, amazing. I'm inspired. I'm inspired by all of the the um, the people that came on today. That was so amazing. Um, thank you to the Elevate Prize for truly awakening the hero, the hero in all of us. And everybody in this room, um, I hope you were inspired as well. Follow the Elevate Prize on Instagram. We all have a hero inside of us. And if you're, you know, I think the word hero actually cut, like you look at the etymology of the word, it, it actually comes from a word that means servant. <laughs> it means servant. So how are you serving? How are you solving problems, not only in your own life, but in other people's lives? And this is this is what I, I think it truly means to to live, to live fully, to answer the call. Thank you guys so much, so much. And uh, until next time, have a beautiful, beautiful week and um, make every breath count. Peace.